Hello, I'm Patricia McNeely from Twin Flame Body. I am a high level healer, Blu-ray Twin Flame, and that is significant and I'm going to tell you why. Because we are at the end of the end and we're at a new beginning right now. So that's the thing I wanna ask you, and I really want you to be introspective and feel yourself here. I want you to really, really, we're gonna pause a moment and I'm going to say something to you and I want you to consider it deeply. When was the last time someone was really grateful that you were here? When was the last time someone called you their goddess? When was the last time someone thanked God on bended knee that you were here and that they met you? If the answer to that is it's been a long time or it's been a lifetime, it's time to know a few things. We're in that time. This is the time to focus on love, on romantic love. A lot of work has been done to not only get you here, and I say this as a Blu-ray because many people have had to be in some form of suspended animation for a while. A little bit like you would put someone in anesthesia. Sometimes that has been the other person in the union while one is waking waked up, woken up. You're not woke if you're criticizing. You're not woke if you're name calling. You're not woke if you're trying to use too much of the head to do this. So when I say we are at the end of something, you're actually right at the end of the old paradigm where such things as game playing, making love a game, has been a game and people get hurt. It's all fun and games until someone gets hurt. But I'm here to tell you that it's time to ramp up your passion. I was inspired by the song, Feel My Way Through the Darkness, Guided by a Beating Heart. Find your way guided by your heart, not your head. There's a lot of things that just won't really do the trick for you anymore. And this is no trick. This is actually something really huge. You are now the proud owners of a brand new template, which I call the template of romance and passion. But it's much more than that. It's your template of health, of well-being. So when was the last time, ask yourself that, Gosh, when was the last time? So I'm gonna go down memory lane here a little bit. And some of my earliest memories were chasing boys around from age two to six and in school and just wanting to kiss them. I didn't know why, I just wanted to kiss. And it was actually that kind of childlike and that pure, like, you know, just, just kiss, let's just kiss. But I know now I was coming from a place where I had been kissing. And this is a part of that suspended animation. What if you're suddenly woken up and there you are and you're suddenly in some energies? What are those energies? And what are the things that you need to get rid of? So we'll go a few years ahead of that point and when I hit puberty that was where I had another type of awakening now this was a body awakening and this was really really something because the energies that I experienced just about made me pass out right there in the classroom and I didn't understand it I stumbled and I was like what was that but I knew inside me something had changed something very fundamental so that my life was really going to take a certain direction. But as a kid, I didn't know what that was. It was just an inner knowingness. Now we go much further and, you know, there's some dalliances, there are some flirtations, there's crushes, all of these things are how 
many of us have learned what love is, how to love, what attractions are. Sometimes we watch it on a show. But for many people, that's been the only way is some of the outward examples. They haven't really felt a high level of love. Like, I mean high. Really from a top upper dimension, really. Sometimes in past lives, people have confused their twin flame energies for being God, which is a natural uh, occurrence. And many of those people were then considered holy people in some way. They had gifts that opened. Now, so many people have their gifts opening and sometimes people don't know what to do with that. Sometimes because it all comes in a jumble, in a rush, they get caught up in it and they're not really sure what is all of this stuff? How does it all fit together? How does it gel? How does it make sense? So let me bring this back to the subject at hand because we are in the month of love. We are in the heart energy. This focus has to be on the heart. The high heart is taking full priority. The high heart is how you feel another level of love. So if it has been a while for you since you felt that and you're like hanging on to a thin thread, it's really time to let me help you because I am a master of the new template of 5D relationship. I am a master of the new twin flame body. I'm a master healer. I'm a master teacher and I help people. So I'm going to explain a little bit further how this has played out over the years. So I myself have always had somewhat of an interest in the body and turns out I'm drawn to that for an exact reason because I'm here as a living bridge between the physical and the metaphysical. But I am a metaphysical person and yet, just to spark that up, you need about 30,000 gigawatts of love to run through your body. Where are you gonna get that kind of electricity, okay? This is not rocket science, it's chemistry. So it is chemistry, it, but chemistry, the love chemistry between you and the person who loves you, truly loves you. I can hear all of the disgruntled delusion people out, the disillusion people out there saying, yeah, I tried. You didn't try the body because the body really hasn't been available until just starting towards the tail end of last year. So we're only about six months into the cycle of the ending of the ending of the ending, or as some of my guidance would like to say, you're, uh, you're in conclusion. Okay, but when is the closure? <laughs> so the closure is coming. When was the last time you felt that way about someone where you were thanking God on bended knee that you met someone, that you felt someone, that you loved someone? And why is it that that love is not enough? Why? You know, and this is not a country song or some other song where you say sometimes love just ain't enough. It's because you're here for everything. It's because you are here to embody, as only lovers can do, the brand new template. That template is for yanking out all the stuff that just doesn't belong. Furthermore, there's three sides to this. You have to, you know, ditch things. You have to grab it. You have to feel it. And you have to continue feeling it. So from that sense, you cannot, in all honesty, go around in a mood or a snit or a depression or something. You have to do something about that. That drags down your true love, wherever they are. And you may have catalyzed something with other people around you. That is happening also because other people around you also need to be able to integrate and embody the template. 
This is not a group template. It is individual for individuals who are here for love. And that sounds really crazy to say, like, you're just here for love. But if you go way back in time to the very, very source of love that you are, you were created by love. You are love. You're made from love. And you're getting back to that natural state of your being. That is the natural part of you. What you do down here is just how that love expresses itself in the world. And if it's being expressed negatively, then it's a game and it's a pattern and it's part of the old stuff. Doesn't matter if you call it inner child or family patterns or ancestral patterns. If it's icky and it's bad, it's got to go. If it has to do with conflict and fornication and screwing people, it has to go. So when was the last time you actually felt passion? And I'm talking about the beating of your heart and the actual love energy. Not something that's a false version of love. Not something that's a teenage crush. I mean real love. Love that is persistent. Love that perseveres. Love doesn't have to be long-suffering, which brings me to the next point. When was the last time you got still and really surrendered? Really surrendering does not mean rolling over and playing dead. Really surrendering does not mean going out and dating someone who you know is inappropriate for you just because you don't know what else to do. I'm telling you quite plainly what else to do. It's time for everyone to kind of get their crap together and really start doing this because this is the real work. It is not tripping around with, you know, other types of tools that you may have used in ancient times. That will only get you so far. And many times it is wasting your mental energy that needs to be used for other things. Your fears, your worries, your concern is another waste of your energy. So I will help you to really surrender because there's a thing to know. And I'm going to tell a little bit about my story here. When I first started feeling this, I was a late teenager. And it was something that I actually thought a lot of people had happened to them. I thought it was actually a part of growing up that everyone had this. But I started to have highly sensual erotic dreams that were not x-rated they were loving they were passionate they were so glidingly lovely and kissing and that it's hard to describe i just knew it was another level we were melted into each other kissing and kissing and kissing now i had no control over these dreams they would seem to come randomly sometimes seasonally and yet they persisted and they were always so high level such a high level of love and they would sustain me for weeks on end i couldn't understand that either how you know i felt just okay i didn't really want to date i didn't really want to sleep with people i actually felt a little asexual because i said you know i look at people and i can find them attractive but there's nothing going on. There's an, there was another part of me, my heart, that was being satisfied. There was There is such a high level of energy that there was a balance there. Now, that didn't stop me. That didn't stop me from then getting married because I had also had some uh, dreams of my marriage. And so when, you know, I met the person... The conclusion of my head was that I was, you know, going to do this. That was during the time of karma. So this was quite a ways back. And it was okay until it started to pull apart and unravel. During my marriage, I started sleeping in a separate room. I didn't know why, but it just felt like that. It just felt like I, I needed to be by myself. I know now why. It was because those dreams had to continue. I had to keep connecting and connecting really high levels and connecting love to myself so that I would have the strength and the balance to do what came next, to really understand it. 
I know that to some extent, I had these experiences on purpose so that I could talk about it, about how you just flow with each other, like you're just gliding around with each other and it is so sensual. It's the most highly erotic, sensual, passionate thing that continues for hours. And you don't get tired. Your physical body will get tired or worn out. If you were to do that in your physical body, the tissues themselves would get worn out. But I would wake up, take one look at my spouse, and I just knew that is not you. But it wasn't my spouse's fault. And so I was very confused. I didn't know what to do with this. Okay. I've always had to be guided by my heart to go with what I felt, to do what I needed to do, to shut down what I needed to shut down, to say goodbye to things that I needed to say goodbye to, to um, keep putting one step forward and to keep understanding that God had something better for me. I did not start off having bad stuff. We definitely had to like balance some stuff when I was married. We had to, you know, kind of, you know, get used to some stuff. But when it unraveled, there was no getting along whatsoever. It didn't matter. I mean, it didn't matter if I said it's up, he said it's down. If it's down, it was up. It, it didn't matter. There was no working it out anymore. I had to go. I didn't like having to go, but I had to go. I had to find my passion again. I had to find myself. I had to focus on myself. I had to focus on me to the extent that I had to exclude so many other things just to get healthy again. And this is what many of you have to do. Surrender. Use your feminine to pull and feel. What are you feeling? And stop feeling like a victim, a martyr, um, the, all of the things that have happened, they've happened repeatedly throughout history. And sometimes, quite honestly, some of us have dished it out. And when it happens back, that's a little bit of the karmic ping back. You just have to understand that you need to get yourself out of that. What happened was I actually met another person. And that was when I first felt this energy. I was thanking God on bended knee. When was the last time you have thanked God on bended knee because of something? With a level of gratitude that goes so deep and so high, it's like primal. It is so primal. Why? because it's touching that very first part of you. Not the creatures we've become here, not the people with masks or facades, but something that touches you so deeply, so profoundly, so poignantly, so sensually, so passionately. I was right there. And it was mind blowing, quite literally because I couldn't think about it. All I could do was feel and I wanted more. And I chased until I gave up the chase because I had known for a while that chasing doesn't really work. It requires attracting. And that's when other things happen. But here's what happened. I felt this is the most important thing ever. And it's the most important thing for you is to feel, feel love. When was the last time you felt loved? Is there, is there one person in your life that appreciates you? Is there one person in your life that just sees you? Is there one person around that thinks you are the next best thing to slice bread? Okay, for some people, that's their aunt or their grandma or their grandpa or their dad or um, a kid at school. Okay, 
If you have had that, you at least know some percentage of what this is, but that's still not what twin flame love is. That's just an inkling of how it comes through. When was the last time you felt? So as I look around and I see a lot of topics about, you know, this and that, I think it's time to start focusing really on your body and where you need to be because that is always what's going to serve you the best. It has to be you and your body, the integration, and not just downloads. You are required to do something with this. And I am raising the bar and I'm asking you bust out of your zones wherever you are and start. Has someone been grateful you are here? So if you want to learn about the new template, if you want to go back to the beginning and learn about this and get yourself up and running and feel because it will be another change of the season. And we're right here in this surge of energy. That's something that I talk about in more length. Um, this is, by the way, not my cooking classes, my coaching classes and sessions. Have a session. I will say one other thing. Because I got to say, I've been very privileged to talk to people all over the world. I mean, that was something I didn't really expect. And for me, that's very exciting. I tell people, I tell people I used to work with, I was like, I talk to people all over the world. They're like, wow. I try to describe to people what it is that I do. And I said, imagine someone meets a soulmate. And they're like, okay. Imagine someone meets their ultimate soulmate called the twin flame and boom, they're struck with all this love energy till they feel like they're upside down and they don't know what to do. And they look at me and go, wow. And I don't even tell them at that point how many highly sensual dreams that I've had about what this is really supposed to feel like, because it is not like some X rated thing. This is all of it put together, the love and the physical and the energetic and the high level. And it is just the deepest, highest part of you. And it gets even more because as I've gone along, it's been even more. So what I tell people is I help them remove the toxic patterns in a jiffy, which means three to four sessions. I've taken people out of their phobias, out of their fear zones, out of their discomfort. And sometimes they run right back to like some of the things people out there try to do to feel spiritual. You don't have to do that. You don't have to go backwards in time to feel spiritual. You need to go forward with your template and feel beyond the spiritual. This is beyond the spiritual. It is the love, the ultimate love that, you know, you're really here for. A lot of people have not felt it, which is why I'm here teaching about the template so that you can. You felt the frisson of it. So when I tell people this, and they're kind of like, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing work. I am very proud of my work and I'm very privileged to work with people who also are brave enough to be right here to get rid of this stuff. Now, I have had people that I've taken where they can't even get in the car without having a phobic panic attack to six sessions later, showing me that they got their driver's license and they drove themselves and they did the driving test and they licked it. Gone. Removed. New templated. New template. I have helped people that have gotten rid of hypoglycemia. The things that I myself have gotten rid of using the new template. A knee injury. A detached retina. Which did require, you have to understand, to an extent, we need the medical community. They're trained for that. We need them. That's how they're trained. I'm helping people with the other parts of it for what's new. This is brand new. This is why you'll see people out there that say, well, I healed this. Well, yes, I have, but I'm here 
to teach you and help you with it in my sessions and if that's not a possibility a group coaching class so thanks so much for watching i think that you need to remember and if you haven't had these experiences come join because this is where it's at thanks so much and remember love 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 okay you're not here to be duped okay by someone who's a pretender you're not learning how to date men when you hate men <laughs> those are some of the things that my library was putting out in honor of you know the month of love so let's like raise the bar on this let's raise the expectations okay we don't want any more hate we need no more of the human family doing some of that we need more love thank you bye